Welcome to this Case of the Week presentation by birdultrasound.com.au. Please visit birdultrasound.com.au to enjoy a wide range of other ultrasound education material. Welcome to Bird Ultrasound Case of the Week. This week we're going to have a look at a thyroid mass, or is it really a thyroid mass? Thyroid ultrasound is a bit like eye ultrasound. You feel like it's going to be really easy. You put the transducer on, everything's really close to the transducer, adiposity is not a problem, and uh, you get these beautiful images, and uh, you know, anyone can get these lovely images. It's just so simple. The problem with eye ultrasound and also thyroid ultrasound is then when you look at the screen, you've got these beautiful pictures. What does it all mean? So what's the diagnosis, and how do you interpret what you're seeing to get to the correct diagnosis? I think one of the things that often trips me up and I suspect many others as well, in thyroid ultrasound is trying to differentiate nodular disease where you have a mass from diffuse thyroid disease where it's a, an autoimmune problem such as Hashimoto's or perhaps Graves disease is another example. Um, there's also de Quervain's uh, thyroiditis as well. So you've got three different types of diffuse disease that can affect the thyroid gland and at some stage in their cycle they can look quite nodular in appearance. And then you're stuck in this quandary. Are you going to look at this area and give it quite a high TIRADS score and sort of be forced to biopsy it? Or are you actually looking at a diffuse process that's in progress? So this is a case that came through the practice. And if you look at this uh, image here, you can see, if you look analytically at it in the right lobe, there is a hypoechoic, solid looking, uh, area that is taller than it is wide. Um, it's reasonably well circumscribed on this one image. And so no calcifications. And it's still going to get quite a few tyrates points because it's solid. It's perhaps not very hypoechoic, but it's certainly hypoechoic relative to the thyroid tissue. You can see that clearly. It's this area here perhaps is even less echogenic than the strap muscles. So it's certainly hypoechoic, if not very hypoechoic. It's vertical as well, so quite a few points. And you could measure that and think that that is a fairly high-scoring nodular mass inside the thyroid gland. The clue, though, is that the margins of it are just a little bit fluffy. And if you look on the other side, just on the corner of the picture here, you can see there's almost a similar area just creeping into the, the left side of the thyroid gland there. And again, on this image, when you look at the margins of it, where really are they? Where, if you're going to measure this area, where do you put your calipers? It just gets a bit a bit irregular around the edges and again when you look at the isthmus it's quite nice but when you come over to this side you can see that this side of the gland has quite a diffuse decrease in echogenicity uh, suggesting that this might actually not be nodular disease but it might be a diffuse disease such as Hashimoto's. The thing to remember with Hashimoto's is that it has to start at some point in time so it doesn't just all happen at once. So this patient presents with uh, a feeling of, of discomfort and tightness and some swelling in the neck. So so it certainly could be because of nodular disease uh, with a goiter type of uh, presentation forming, but it certainly can be from a diffuse disease process. And, and Hashimoto's would be the one that this looks most like in, on that initial assessment. So rather than calling this a localised mass, we'll consider the fact that it might be part of a diffuse process. If you look at it in the long axis and measure it in that axis, you can see that it really doesn't have much in the way of margins. It's quite sort of diffuse, it sort of spreads through the tissue and, and it doesn't really have a nice capsule that you can expect to be able to measure. Now, while certainly papillary cancers can have irregular sort of spiculated margins, when they just sort of blend into the background of the tissue, this makes me think that perhaps this is a thyroiditis. So with Hashimoto's, you go from having normal thyroid tissue to the beginning of the onslaught of the autoimmune process. And I think of it a bit like cirrhosis in a liver where it's sort of a progressive ongoing process where slowly but surely uh, the autoimmune system will destroy and break down each square millimetre of the thyroid gland over a long period of time until the job's completely done and there's no function left for that thyroid. So what we're seeing here is where the autoimmune system has certainly attacked all of this area, but there's lots of areas over here and areas over here that are well preserved at this stage. So it's a bit like fatty infiltration, fatty sparing in the liver. But then when you look at the other side of the gland here, you can clearly see that there's a diffuse area with really no marginal topography to it that you can clearly measure of 
hypoechoic change inside the left lobe of the thyroid gland. And then this is really now suggestive that we're not dealing with a high scoring tyrant's mass, we're dealing with a diffuse problem. And more images again showing that the margins of this area, hypoechoic area, are very irregular and uh, difficult to pin down. In the long axis of that left lobe, again, you can see it's quite a diffuse looking process. So it doesn't really look uh, like a localized area. It looks very diffuse. Uh, you can also use the metaphor, if you like, of a fibroid within a uterus compared to adenomosis. This is a much more adenomatic looking appearance where it's patchy and it's uh, involving the myometrium more broadly as opposed to a fibroid, which would be a circumscribed area of muscle change. So this is six weeks later. So rather than biopsying this area, we brought them back for a review. And you can see six weeks later, it is dramatically different. So the invasion has continued and the thyroid tissue that was not involved, uh, much of it now has succumbed to the Hashimoto's thyroiditis and the autoimmune onslaught has uh, unfortunately been quite successful here. And you're only left with sort of small areas now, particularly at the lower pole in these deep part of the right lobe that are still preserved and providing that thyroid function. Another thing you'll notice is that there's little lymph nodes popping up. If you look at the left lobe, you can see that that's also been quite progressive. And it's now another uh, pitfall you can fall into is you can see here there's this echogenic area here. Now that echogenic area as we whiz past it there, if you watch it again, that area there, that's what I refer to as a white night. So uh, what that means is this is just some normal thyroid tissue. It looks like an echogenic mass inside the thyroid gland, but what it is, it's the last little bastion of preserved thyroid tissue and all of the tissue around it has been overwhelmed by the autoimmune Hashimoto's disease process. And so it looks like a white mass against a black background of thyroid. In fact, what it is, the black background is all abnormal tissue and the small remaining area of normal tissue looks like that white echogenic uh, mass-like lesion. On this video also, you can see lots of examples, uh, particularly below the thyroid gland, and I think this is really typical of Hashimoto's, is when you come inferior to the gland, you see lots of level six lymph nodes. Now remember level six in the AJCC lymph node uh, characterization are lymph nodes between the two carotid arteries, so they're essentially paratracheal in nature, and they're really common below the thyroid gland with Hashimoto's. So you're coming down on the left side, so I'm deliberately coming down below the thyroid now, so I'm below it, and I'm looking in that paratracheal area, and you can see lots of little round hypoechoic shotty nodes, and that's pretty classic for Hashimoto's. If we then go to the right side, you can come right down below the right lobe, and you can see many examples of small little white nights there as well, and below the right lobe you've got the same sort of shotty, uh, fairly round hypoechoic lymph nodes. You notice they don't really have much fatty hilum either, but they're small, and I think this type of lymph node morphology is entirely consistent with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, is what you see this very, very regularly. There's also a small little colloid cyst inside the thyroid. So of course the thyroid, even though it's being invaded by the Hashimoto's process, still has its own little you know, cystic areas, etc., which are uh, really ubiquitous when you scan through a thyroid gland anyway. But I think now that we're seeing this patient for the second time, it's really clear that we were never dealing with something that was a, a high tyrant scoring mass. We were always dealing with something that was a diffuse thyroid disease. So the question is, how else can you expedite their management? Uh, you can certainly do some... Uh, blood assessment looking for the antibodies uh, for Hashimoto's and of course a nuclear medicine scan is another another test that we can use to to cement down the diagnosis. So there'll be certainly times in my clinical practice where I look at an area in the thyroid gland and I'll go to the reporting room and I'll be saying look I think it's probably at uh, the beginning of a diffuse thyroid disease like Hashimoto's, but I'm not certain. And so what we'll do then is we'll, we'll suggest that we do a blood workup and a nuclear medicine scan. And based on what those two tests uh, deliver in terms of results, we'll determine then whether or not we go back and, uh, and recommend a biopsy of that hypoechoic area, or whether in fact we march on down the Hashimoto's pathway of treatment. And the long axis as well, uh, you can see that uh, there's not too much thyroid gland remaining. And, and it's really quite remarkable, given that these two scans are only six weeks apart, how, how rapid and aggressive the, uh, the overtaking of the normal tissue by that autoimmune process is. It's quite dramatic. It's another couple of nice examples of little white nights. You can see even the isthmus now has become involved in the process. So, and the thyroid function here will be diminishing rather rapidly.
So I hope you've enjoyed this case of the week. Uh, thyroid ultrasound, who would have thought? Like, you think it's pretty simple, but sometimes it's not as simple as it looks. And the differentiation between diffuse disease versus nodular localised disease can be a little tricky. I hope this discussion has helped you. Happy scanning and bye for now. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation by birdultrasound.com.au. Please visit birdultrasound.com.au to enjoy a wide range of other ultrasound educational material. And if you have any questions about this presentation or any other ultrasound questions for me, please email me anytime at stayintouch at birdultrasound.com.au. Happy scanning and bye for now.